Okay, so I recently had a subscriber send me a picture of this schematic diagram that you can see here and ask me to explain it to him. Now, typically I don't have time to do this, but since it's around Thanksgiving, I actually had just a quick minute to look at this. And I have to tell you, I, I found a lot of very interesting things in uh, the schematic diagram. So I thought that I would walk you through it. Um, there are some things in here that I've just personally never seen the way they're doing it, which is totally fine. And if you are in the fluid power industry, you know that that happens all the time, that you will see something new every single day. And there are some things here that I had to kind of figure out as I walked through. So what I want to do is um, I want to tell you what I do know and what I don't. Okay. So this is in the JIC electrical schematic uh, process. That is not something I am familiar with. We use more of a ladder diagram system here in the U.S. and um, sometimes I do, I don't struggle understanding them, but it's not something I'm familiar with and it takes me a little bit longer to snap into it. So as much as the electrical system in here does genuinely control everything about this, um, I wanted to focus more on the hydraulics. Okay, and so um, although I will reference this a couple of times in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So you can see here there's a in this there's a manual switch right here. Okay, which activates LS1, which is right here. And that limit switch will eventually activate um, our solenoid for our main directional control valve for our clamping systems. So what we have here is a three clamp process and a drill. Okay, now I don't know what the machine looks like. All I got was a schematic diagram. So what it's clamping and what it's drilling, I just don't know. So uh, let's go ahead and start taking a look. So here is a variable pump. It doesn't identify the type, but it's, it's electric motor driven. So the electrical motor will convert electrical energy into rotational mechanical energy, and the pump will convert it to hydraulics. Now, a couple of things happen here that are important. Um, this is a variable, and it doesn't say what type of variable it is, all right? But that means that it's probably variable pressure compensated. Um, it's, it's either a vane or a piston pump, all right? Comes up to here and it has our uh, gauge. It comes up here and it splits and it goes down to our drill press, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Then it immediately goes to a pressure reducing valve. And I can tell this is a pressure reducing valve for a couple of reasons. One, it's the normally open and right there you know, also the pilot signals coming from before it and it is externally drained, which is what this line here is. Okay, so all of those things being said, I can tell what that this is a pressure reducing valve. Comes up to here, you have another gauge to tell how much you've reduced the pressure to, okay, whatever pressure is required. And then it comes to a 4 2 directional control valve identified right here. Okay, sorry, I went ahead and switched it over to so you could see it a little bit easier. So this directional control valve, this 4-2 double solenoid control valve here is our main directional control valve, which will, which will control the clamping process. So typically when you are clamping something, you want to clamp in a certain sequence. Now the way they sequence is not a way that I've ever done it before, but again, no judgment. I think it's it works the way they're doing it. So let's go ahead and first thing what we know is in the position that it is drawn in, and I guess you'd almost call this its normal position, but since there's not a spring on it, it's a little bit tough to say that. The oil comes up to here and it holds this in place. Okay, so this is going to keep clamp one retracted in its normal position. All right, it's also tapped off to here, comes in here and keeps clamp three in its normal position. And it comes all the way, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to see, but it taps right here, jumps over all these lines, comes in through this little circuit right here, looks like a metering out circuit, comes up through here, and will hold this in place as well. So clamp two, so they're all being held in the retracted position, okay? So now, what happens to activate this. So LS1 has to be activated and LS2 here has to be activated, meaning this clamp has to be retracted even if this is in start position because it's LS1 and LS2 have to be activated to activate SA1. And what the heck is that? That is this right here and that will move this solenoid and it will shift over the spool and then everything will begin to sequence. Okay, so let's look what happens when we were to do that. If I were to take this and shift this over, my oil would come from my A port 
okay and it would be it would go to this line now comes to here which will help to extend clamp one that oil also comes up to here and it goes to a pilot to open check valve okay and it comes over to here to another pilot to open check valve so what that means is although oil will come to this line to extend all of them it won't be able to extend clamp one or clamp two or clamp three okay it'll only be able to extend clamp one two and three are not going to be able to move until specific things happen all right there's also a pilot line tapped off of this going to this limit switch this is a three two limit switch normally closed because where the spring is okay now so let's walk through this okay i'm going to try to go as slow as i can uh you know if you have questions I, i'll try to answer them in the comments but i'll just do my best so um this comes up this clamp clamp one begins to move out okay when it's all the way extended or at a certain point ls um this dcvd here activates and when that activates this is a little confusing it goes through this pilot line all the way over to g here this pilot to open check valve and that opens the pilot to open check valve now the oil from the pump which is coming through down to here can flow through here and it will begin to lift clamp two okay now clamp two uh, when it goes up it will activate uh, DCVE here all right and when that happens there's a pilot line right here that comes up and this roller gets activated or limit switch whatever you want to call it activates and then oil can come down through here and activate the pilot to open F all right and so now this opens this comes up to here and this begins to extend as well okay now when clamp 3 is all the way activated it will activate ls3 okay and ls3 is right here all right now i know more about plc's than i do motor controls and uh although i can read ladder diagrams this though is not something i'm used to seeing in the plc world because we don't do this we don't activate a vertical line like this everything is horizontal but in the motor control world you can so when ls3 is all the way activated this activates here okay and when this goes true a couple of things happen one sb1 is activated okay all right and sb1 is right here so all three of these clamps are now extended all right um this uh this is still in this position all right even though ls2 has been took, taken off there's no spring here so all these are being held in position and so the oil that was tapped off of here comes into a check valve that's just to make sure oil doesn't go back through it this is more of a mechanical thing the uh the directional control valve might be higher than where the pump is and then it comes into this four three directional control valve spring centered double solenoid controlled all right and this activates okay so when ls3 is activated here um the this activates and pushes this up all right when that happens oil can flow into here and it can begin to push I think they're calling this piston four it's a little hard to see right here this is going to extend with the electrical motor now kicked on okay now that might be somewhere down here in the uh, schematic diagram I'm not sure but um, this is going to begin to extend all right all the oil is going to come out through in this meter out circuit now this is an interesting way they did this okay they used a four three here to um, to control the different just the ways that this line coming out of the your uh, rod end of your cylinder is coming through here so this is like a meter out because this is a flow control here it looks like they have two there i don't know why they would do that but maybe there's something there i just don't know It'd be totally I, that is completely possible but this this is should be somewhat of a meter out circuit okay and then this is going to extend and begin to drill okay now ls4 here 
is tied to here um, when that that will open up all right and um, this will begin to extend until it hits ls5 okay now when this extends and hits ls5 bp2 will activate right here okay and when that happens, it will send oil up through here and begin to retract this. Now, what this does right here is some form, again, I've never seen this, so please comment down if you understand this, but this looks to me to be some form of like very generic speed control where automatically where it'll go at this speed here, it's in this box, then it will go to this box, then it will hold this box, and that will control the oil coming out of here. I've just never seen it before. Maybe it's very common and I've just never run into it. I'm not sure, okay? So when LS4, when when LS5 is activated, okay, this will activate here. Um, BP1 will have to be disconnected, all right? And then um, A2, will be activated because as soon as LS4 is let go, this goes true, all right? And these will then begin to retract. Now, when these are retracting, they will, if I come right up here, this will retract, this will retract, and this will retract all at the same time. So all three cylinders will retract at the same time. So uh, this was a pretty cool circuit. You know, it's really nice when I get a chance to sit down and diagnose something like this and to see something maybe I've never seen before. And so uh, there may be some things I missed. I know I didn't spend a ton of time on the logic down here. I'm hoping this was more of a fluid power question uh, and not in the electrical side. But again, the electrical here is pretty straightforward. Um, there are some things in here that, you know, like K1 and 2. I feel like I used to know what those stood for. Um, I'm guessing that they're uh, indicator lights, but I, I don't know. Um, if you know, please comment down below. I'd love to. I'd love to learn. I'd love to uh, figure this stuff out. So, uh, anyway, I hope that if you, uh, I hope this circuit just kind of diagnosing it and running it through helps. And I hope the person who sent me the message uh, actually watches it. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, good luck in your uh, hydraulic understanding of the circuits. There's a lot of cool things in this and even if this is something you'll never see out in the real world being able to diagnose and trying to understand all of these things are really really important and i have a ton of videos on hydraulics i've never done something like this before where i break down a whole circuit but if that's something you like please hit the like button and i'll do more and uh you know send me a comment down below that you'd like me to see do more of these so anyway all right thank you very much